It's True Faith TV and Newcastle played this weekend. Charlotte Robson, my co-host. Uh, I've no idea how they got on because I'm a League Cup man. Always have been, always will be. I assume the Premier League exists purely to enter the League Cup at a later possible stage. And then again, European football exists purely to get into the League Cup as late as possible, as it is, as it has always been the most important competition in the world. Charlotte, how did Newcastle get on? When? Uh, at the weekend? I think they played. I think there was a Premier League game. I wouldn't, I'm afraid I wouldn't know. I'm a, I'm a League Cup man. <laughs> woman no uh we look you know the thing about this is we really forged a thing of um saying we're fucking class and it's very difficult to keep doing that when we actually you know what the performance wasn't that bad at the weekend but the sort of that sort of sticky little 20 minutes really buggered us up so um I can't say it properly. I mean, I can because I still do believe it in my heart and soul. But you know what? The Premier League, be damned. I'm not interested in the Premier League. I've, I've never been interested in the Premier League. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't interest me. Boring. Give me the League Carabao Cup any day. The other day I said I was talking about tickets to the Carabao Cup final. <laughs> This I was with was like, thanks for full naming it. You don't, need, you don't need to call it the Carabao Cup final. They should sponsor it- TFTV. Yeah, I was going to say it works. If if they were to pay us like one pound per mention, we'd already have like four quid. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and, it, and it's a shame not to win every single match convincingly. And sometimes you've just got to let the other team win by capitulating in a small part of the game and, and ensuring you definitely can't win by getting one of your best players sent off in comedic fashion. That's all right because it's not the League Cup. It's not the League Cup. And I looked through the fixtures this weekend. I couldn't see League Cup anywhere. And I was like, give this one a miss. Give it a miss. Yeah. You have only seen like maybe five matches this season then, right? Like... Yeah. And about 11 matches in my life because previously <laughs> the football club didn't ever progress in the League Cup uh, until this season when it became, as it always was, the most important competition in the history of football. Yeah. I mean, this is what children dream of. Champions what? Like, <laughs> no, I'm not interested. Who's Lionel Messi? Has he ever won a League Cup? Don't believe he has. Well, then. So one check Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> but Charlotte, but Charlotte, the League Cup final this weekend. Can't fucking wait. Get in. We're going to Wembley. I don't care where you are in the world. I'm sure you're buzzing. You're going to watch it with your friends, your family, by yourself. All all are valid ways, Charlotte, to consume the most important final ever How in football history. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how excited are you? I'm very excited. I mean, if we had played at the weekend and everything had gone a little bit tits up, I might be less excited or possibly a little bit more trepidatious than I was this time last week. But I'm really excited. I just think it's going to be a class weekend. Tens of thousands of Geordies descending on London. Like, they're just not going to know what's hit them, are they? I'm so excited for it. What about you? Yeah, can't wait. Same reasons as you. You give a very good answer, so I'll not even try and, and, and live up to it. We'll, we'll move on to point number two of the show, Charlotte, which is... Um, have you ever wondered, Alex, why I have blonde hair? <laughs> uh, never, but please tell me, just in case I had been wondering. It's because of my lifelong fan obsession with <laughs> Loris Carius, because I have always loved him and always... Um, wanted to emulate him and what better way than with looking at his gorgeous locks and trying to make mine like that because of course (laughs) Carius is probably going to be our goalkeeper at the um, League Cup final at Wembley and um, that's fine because I'm a big fan and I've always been a big fan and I've actually personally been disappointed if he wasn't playing (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean you know Rarely have Newcastle had such a good fourth choice goalkeeper um, in their history. And let's face it, the man's played one game for Newcastle, I think. Might have played another friendly. He lifted. He was there anyway when Jacob Murphy lifted the trophy. I, I didn't watch long enough on the stream to see who else lifted the, the he Saudi Arabia. It probably at some yeah, point. he touched it. So he's got a 100% fine, uh, record in massive games for Newcastle. And, you know, it could be worse, Charlotte. It could be worse, couldn't it? It could be worse. And, you know, like, 
a lot of people like me who um, know Loris Carius's, um extensive statistical history as a goalkeeper <laughs> have said that he had he kept five clean sheets in that Champions League round that that people then point to his like bad he he, he let in was it a penalty? No, it was uh, no, it was a, a shot that went straight through him, I think. But he, yes, he was elbowed it. in the skull by Sergio Ramos moments before, and, and this this isn't just TFTV lops. It he was concussed. The he was concussed. concussion. He literally had a concussion. So you know what? Yeah, okay. The last time he played properly was two years ago. Apart from lifting the cup for us in the summer, and that's not ideal. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It's not ideal. But he's clearly got some credentials. And Eddie says he trains well. And I trust Eddie, even though he routinely lies about the way the the players are doing (laughs) um, and how things are going. I trust him. I think it's going to be great. I've always loved Loris Karius. I'm going to get his name tattooed on my face this weekend. That's what I'm going to do. If he... No, I'm not committing to a tattoo. No, I should. Going to say, tune in next week to see the <laughs> results of that. Um, but, but also, Charlotte, it creates one of the great arcs of history, one of the great <laughs> schemes. In fact, if Loris Carius wins us this game, and it's a big if, I'll admit to you, we can share that that insecurity. Mm-hmm. It's a big if, but it could happen. But it could happen. The idea of sending Martin Dubravka on loan to Manchester United to play disastrously for them get himself cup ties so he can't play after Nick Pope got sent off. So Carius had to play because how otherwise wouldn't realistically have been able to pick Carius will go down as one of the great plans. Because yeah. he obviously meant it. How else would we find ourselves in this situation? It would be ridiculous, would it not? Unless it was planned all along. That's the long game. And Eddie <laughs> and Mad Dog do nothing but plan. So I think this has been in the works since before... Eddie even got the job. And this is probably one of his, um, you know, we had all those ring binders of like plans. This is probably, it's probably quite buried in there. They, he probably didn't get to it in the presentation, but. Yeah. You know, you spend a week with Diego Simeone, you're going to come up with some mad shit. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Let's move on though, from right. that guaranteed success to Carriers point number life. three. Carriers for life. Mm-hmm. It will be Carriers for life, Charlotte, if you get the two. Just warning you, just saying. Know what you're doing before you I'm make not, that decision. Yeah, I'm not committing to that, by the way, because I don't have any tattoos and I'm, I don't know. Do I want carriers to be my favorite? Let's talk about it later. <laughs> well, you already model yourself on the model yourself in the mind, the hair, Charlotte. Right. You know, is there a need? Is there a need for a. For I would a have to get tattoo? his face tattooed over my face. <laughs> yeah. Have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are a lot of commitments to make here on this Monday magazine show. Um, Point number three, Charlotte. That goes out on a Tuesday. Point number three, Charlotte, is uh, Fabian Shaw. I did an interview with uh, with the Telegraph behind a paywall. Who would produce content behind a paywall, Charlotte? I don't know. Uh, We do that, uh, viewer, for our patron uh, for audio stuff. Charlotte and I do. But anyway, Fabian Shaw. He did an interview about his defensive colleagues. Um, Two things jumped out at me, Charlotte. Number one, he described all of them, apart from Kieran Trippier, as fucking massive. Not just massive. Dan Byrne, he's fucking massive. Sven Botman, he's fucking massive. Like he's obsessed by size. Nick Pope, he's Nick fucking Pope's massive. fucking massive. Well, yeah, but you know what? That, that is true. They are all fucking massive. Yeah. Now strange... Gordon's fucking massive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is a strange way to go on about them. Like, the first thing he said each time is he's fucking mad. like it's almost like a little bit of insecurity from Fabian, which he shouldn't have. Well, um, wasn't it Almiron who, who or was it Murphy's? Anyway, somebody did um, an interview where they said he was like, "Who's the most vain in the changing room?" And like that, they were like Fabian Chef. <laughs> Fabian Chef. <laughs> Fabian. Yeah. Fabian. Uh, uh, Fabian also said about Sven Botman, he didn't really talk about his defensive ability. He said, I wish I looked like that at 22. Do you, Fabian? That's I thought a you'd look up. Yeah, but well, I thought Fabian would have looked okay himself at 22. <laughs> um, but apparently not. I think Fabian, I'm bringing a, a female perspective to it. I think he might have been a bit gawky at 22 and has grown into his looks. Whereas Sven Botman looks like one of those Easter Island like stone things and he you know just looks like he's carved from stone and pro- probably looked like that from age like three which is 
alarming <laughs> probably for the other kids in the playground, but works now. So I can kind of understand it from Fabian. But it's also, it is a funny thing to say, isn't it, when you're being asked about the football? Yeah, it's a really funny thing to say. We like it, good content for us. Keep it going, yeah, Fabian. And maybe that's why I decided not to track any of the um, Liverpool runners in the game. Um, that didn't happen. That I didn't see because he was too busy admiring what Sven Botman looks like at 22. I don't know. They're all class. They'll be okay. It'll get out of the system next week. Let's do Charlotte's hashtag. Thank you to everyone who follows the rules. The rules matter to me anyway. Hashtag Ask TFTV. Um, and this week is from Carl Segge, who talks naturally about the biggest game in world football ever, the League Cup final this weekend. Uh, heading into the Cup final, what are you most excited about, Charlotte? And what are you most worried about? Which one do you want to start with? I'm most excited about winning a cup for the first time in fucking ages. And I'm most nervous about not winning the cup <laughs> because we don't have our first choice keeper. But again, as I've said, no, actually, I changed my answer. The thing I'm most excited about is seeing my guy, Loris Karius, walk <laughs> out onto that pitch at Wembley where he belongs and where <laughs> I have adamantly said he belongs since I was a young girl. Believable. Wholly <laughs> believable. And so they need to play this shit to Loris before he goes out on the pitch because um, it will inspire. It doesn't need inspiring because it's the biggest game of, in the world and he's one of the and best keepers in the world. He's class. He doesn't just look good. He also saves good, uh, as the old saying goes. Um, that saying. So sweet. I think my, my answer would be, you know what, Carl? I'm probably most excited about that little kind of one hour before kickoff when we're all in the ground out singing Manchester United. And it's it's just going to be unbelievable. There's going to be flags. There's going to be noise. There's going to be people doing podcasts, recording them um, via a paywall. If Please. that is your thing, come and join us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlotte. Um, but yeah, I can't. I can't wait for that. I'm just excited for us all to be there together, making a noise before the game has started. Then nothing can go wrong as long as you don't lose your ticket or some mad shit or get arrested. Um, oh, yeah. Everything will be fine. Uh, and then probably least looking forward to having to, um, um, you know, determine what mark out of ten to give Loris Carius at the, the final whistle. Nine point five or ten? It's going to be a hard decision. How is because... that even a conversation? It's ten or eleven. <laughs> 11. Realistic answer is getting away from Wembley's a fucking nightmare. And and should we get beat in the world's biggest game ever due to some kind of ridiculous, um, I don't know, administrative error on the score from the referee? I don't know. I would lose this game. Emma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then, yeah, leaving Wembley will be difficult. But uh, I hope that answers your question, Carl. And thank you to you all who do hashtag AskTSTV. We do read all of those comments, Charlotte, as well as read all of the rest of them is that what you yes, mean that's, that's the yeah answer. i love the comments i love comments alex likes likes and subscriptions you can do that yeah. if you don't do that already but um i love your comments please do comment not if you're gonna be nasty about my voice look i'm sorry about it but i'm not changing it um but i love them and uh we'll be back after, oh no we're gonna do something a little a little a little preview before the game aren't we We've got a live show, one of two live shows in London this weekend. Sold out, I'm afraid, if you'd wanted to come. But uh, we'll do a little cup final preview of the world's biggest ever football match with the world's best goalkeeper, the number one. See you then.